And we're going to start in verse 26. We're going to read down through here uh, about four verses. This is uh, when uh, Jesus appears unto Thomas. And uh, so we'll start in verse 26. The Bible says, And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. All right, so let's go ahead and bow our heads real quick. Had a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I pray that you would just help me to preach your word with boldness and clarity. Help me to say what needs to be said, Lord God, and that uh, the brethren here would be edified tonight. We ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So the title of the sermon is My Lord and My God. It's obviously derived here from John chapter 20. And what I want to really talk about tonight is the importance of when we're out preaching the gospel, making sure that people understand that not only is Jesus Christ the Son of God, but He is the, the, the one true God manifest in the flesh. Amen. And so, turn with me real quick to 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. And we're going to look in verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. The Bible says this, But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by Him. Now, I hear a lot of people talk about, then they'll go to this, they'll, they'll try to use this verse and say that it's teaching the Orthodox Trinity, or what we would say today is the Orthodox Trinity. You have the first and the second person located right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. But the context of what's even being sp spoken about is the fact that there, you know, there are many false gods in the world. There are many false uh, Christs. There are many false lords because it says... Uh, in verse, yeah, it says, uh, it says in verse 7, how be it there is, or excuse me, not verse, uh, verse 5, for though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things. So the important thing that we can derive from that real quick is the Bible tells you who God is. God is the Father. There's only one God, and it is the Father. And there's only one Lord, Jesus Christ. And it's obviously Jesus. Jesus, the, the, a lot of people think that Christ is like his last name or something, but Christ is a reference to that flesh. He's the Messiah. He's the anointed one. That's why Peter says in Matthew 16, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So it's, it's talking about the fact that we have one Messiah, one Lord. And so the context is very important there, and it's very important that we teach people that there's only one God and there's one Lord Jesus Christ. Go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we'll start in verse 18. The Bible says, And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God which we just saw was the Father, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of, rec the word of reconciliation. And obviously in Colossians 2.9 the Bible says, For in Him, talking about the man Christ Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So in Christ dwells God. That's why the Christ is that one true God. Amen. And one of the things that we need to really understand is like, I never really ran into this in Phoenix. I know I've talked to a couple of you about this, but one of the things I've noticed in Jacksonville is, is even amongst various denominations, and I'm not even talking about Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons, but, but your mainstream Christians, you know, Baptists, uh, Methodists. I've heard so many people... You know, when we're out preaching the gospel and we talk to them about the fact that, you know, uh, in the middle of our gospel presentation, I'll ask them, you know, you understand that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, right? And every Christian believes that Jesus is the Son of God. All forms of Christianity understand that He's the Son of God. But then you ask the question, you also understand that Jesus is God, right? And a lot of people will say yes, obviously. This is, this is something that, you know, most... Most uh, you know, mainstream Christians understand that Jesus Christ is truly God. However, they understand that. But one of the things I've noticed is that even among some Baptists, people will say, well, he's not. He's the Son of God. 
And it's like they're, what they're implying is that, well, there's God and then there's His Son. Like they're not the same. But if there's only one God and Jesus is God, then Jesus is Him. He has to be, right? And so it's important for us to, to make sure they understand He's the Son of God, but we also need to make sure that they understand His deity. Now one of the, the easiest ways to do that is I'll tell people who have any kind of questions and I'll turn them straight to 1 Timothy 3.16. That's one of the clearest scriptures in the book, right? 1 Timothy 3.16, and great is the mystery of godliness. God, and I'll say that one God, right? I'll ask them, how many gods are there? And most people say, well, there's only one. And then the Bible says, well, God was manifest in the flesh. So who was manifest in the flesh? It was that one God. He became a man, right? And it was the man Christ Jesus. And then I'll turn them to Matthew 1.23. Turn to Matthew 1.23 with me real quick. Turn to Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, just as a supporting verse. And everyone gets this. This is not, you know, something that people struggle with. After you show them the clear, you know, 1 Timothy 3, 16, Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, the Bible says right here, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So who was that son? He was God with us. He was the one true God with us. And most people, they understand. I mean, I spoke to a lady uh, just uh, about a week ago with Brother Ray, and she, had, she was uh, studying with Jehovah's Witnesses or something like that. And I showed her these couple of clear verses, and I showed her a couple of other ones also, and she got it like this. That's what the book says. That's what I believe. It's, it's not something that's very hard to define, you know, who Jesus Christ was. Uh, even, even Pastor, we went out soul winning on Monday, <clears throat> last Monday, and it was a kid who professed to go to a Baptist church. He's a good kid, and he ended up winning him to the Lord, but he asked him, you know, do you understand that Jesus is God? And he said, well, he's God's son. And that's, he had to spend a little time showing him that, you know, who Jesus, uh, you know, who he was. He was the one true God manifest in the flesh. And so... Uh, that's one of the things I just wanted to kind of like hit on real quick is, is making sure that people understand who Jesus is because obviously we must understand that He is God's Son, but you also have to understand that He is the one true God. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. And look with me real quick in verse 5. Isaiah 42 <clears throat> verse 5, the Bible says, Thus saith God the Lord... He that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I the Lord have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. I am the Lord. Uh, go down with me to verse 8. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Go with me uh, real quick to Matthew chapter 16. So Jehovah God in the Old Testament says, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will not, I not give to another. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. This is all kind of extracurricular. <clears throat> this isn't something that I would just spend time with, but I'm just giving you a couple of other verses you could turn to just if you wanted to get into a deep Bible study. But in Matthew chapter 16, verse uh, 27, it says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of His Father with His angels, and then He shall reward every man according to His work. So in Isaiah 42, God says that I'm not going to give my glory to anyone else. In Matthew chapter 16, it says that the Son will come in the glory of the Father, now go over to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. And look in verse 31. The Bible says, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. And before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. So Jesus Christ is coming in the glory of His Father, but He's also coming in His own glory. There's only one glory, you know. And so I think that that's also a real cool thing is, is that, uh, you know, that glory that Jehovah said I won't share with anyone else, well, Jesus is showing you that He's coming in that glory. And so 
It, like I said, it's important to understand that, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, but we also have to understand that Jesus Christ is God. And we need to make sure that when we're out preaching the gospel, that we are, uh, we're making that known unto people, and we're not uh, letting people go by the wayside and not understand that. Because Jesus said in John 8, 24, If you believe not that I am He, ye shall die in your sins. So you have to understand He's the Son. You also have to understand that He is God. Amen. Right? So let's go ahead and bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity for me to preach your word. I pray that uh, the, the brethren were able to get something out of it, Lord God, and I pray that you would just be with uh, Brother Anthony as he comes up here and, uh, and preaches also. We, we love you and thank you so much for, uh, for your word, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.